Hello, it's Jesse here, and we're going to be working on lacing a, and rebuilding a 16-inch wheel from a 1940 UH. So we'll be going into detail here as we go along, but starting off here, you can see we got the rim, nice repainted black, Kelsey Hayes rim, 16-inch, and then a stepped hub, 1938 to 1939-40-ish. to 40 because in 41 they changed, but this is the step tub design. And anyways, it's been restored. And it's got new components in it, new bearings. A nice uh, parkerized star here on the end. And then nice correct uh, round head screws. And then we have cadmium set here of spokes and cadmium set of uh, nipples for the spokes so um, in 1940 was the first year the 16 inch rim as an option so I'll be putting this uh, 40 or 16 inch rim assembly wheel on my 1940 UH and otherwise it was all there were 18 inches back then 18 inch wheels as standard equipment and it wasn't till like 1941 or 42 when it actually became standard as for as a 16 inch wheel but anyway we'll go into further detail but um anyway here we go we got the we got the procedure on removing the wheel from the on the bike and then rebuilding of the hub which has already been done we won't worry about this so that's kind of how it's laid out individual rollers into a retainer a sleeve uh, shims it's all been pre-set up by a friend of mine, and then uh, it also got the the Star Hub components here, which was pretty uh, easy to do there. So, anyways, um, this is considered the interchangeable hub. Now, what that means is that this wheel was universal from front and rear, and you could actually rotate your your tire by putting it on the front or the rear. Just by switching out the um, the drums on the other on the one side of the of the stepped hub here, this uh, star hub, then you could put it either front or rear, which made it kind of nice and convenient. It changed things as in the 70s when they went away from the star hub design, interchangeable hub. But um, pretty much in this video here, we're going to cover lacing and then we'll get into chewing it and then getting it ready for the bike um yeah, i gotta do this to two of them so we'll just do a video on the one here for sure and then uh, we'll go from there but um this is one of the last steps that i'm going to try to accomplish here before we start putting this bike together so so stay tuned here and we'll see how this all pans out in the end or yeah something like that so stay tuned All right, so according to procedure here, putting the spokes in, we have a top row, and these go clockwise into the rim, and the bottom row goes counterclockwise into the rim. So what that means is, this is the bottom row, and it's going, going uh, counterclockwise, and it's coming over here to this one that's pointing this direction. So what you're doing is, you're when you put the spoke in, you're finding the best alignment with these with these uh, holes here and then you thread the nipple in a little ways to about there so we'll do a couple here in video and then you can see how it goes and then we'll probably jump ahead to where we have them all in or something so so like that one there putting it in and pulling it to counterclockwise and the best one that lines up it'll go to there looks like it'll be that one 
So we'll leave that one there for now. I'll just move along here. It's kind of an artwork when you do it because it has a sweet looking pattern when it's done. And if the pattern isn't right, well then you didn't do it right. So we got a total of 40 on each on this whole wheel here, 40 spokes. 10, 10 counterclockwise on the one side. 10 clockwise on the other side. And then on each side you got 20. Yeah, okay, so then, like he was saying, we got 10 going this direction, and then 10 going <clears throat> this direction around. All right, well stay tuned while we get these rest of these in here and we start putting the putting them into the, the nipples into the rim and then we'll talk about that. All right, so we got all the spokes on this bottom row on the hub ready to go in here. So we got this nipple in, we just put that one in, he's running this one in now. And then what we got is three holes between each spoke right now as we're starting here. Now the other one, the one you see right here in the middle, this is an up one. So this will go into the top row on this hub. And then these other two holes will be for the other side of the hub. So we're gonna maneuver this around and so you can get the, the spoke in there and put that nipple in as well. And the reason we got three nipples left over is because this is 10. And we got 30 spokes left over yet. Right. 20 on each side. So stay tuned here while we continue to put these uh these all in. All right, so we got all the nipples on this bottom row in the hub here. This is our first set of 10. Um, they're all real loose kind of right now, so we can flex it around. This is going to start tightening up as we go to put more in. And then we got to leave them loose because we have to do the whole other side yet. So, But um, now we're going to start doing the top row of the hub. Now it's going to be going the other direction. Here we are. We're putting the other, one, the other set in now. So we'll lay all these in here and we'll start... Start uh, thread them in like that. So stay tuned here. Here we go. We got all these in now, pretty much. It's got like a couple left here on this row, and then like one left, I think. And then we'll be ready to flip it over. Start on that side. So yeah, it's starting to look like a wheel. And then yeah, if you get the if you get, if it should be like continuous pattern, and if you get it mixed up, of course we know where to start, go back and fix it at, but looks like we're doing pretty good here on this one without having to redo it. So stay tuned. All right. So now that we've flipped it over to the other side, you're supposed to start with the, with the um, brake drum end, which we did. And the inner row here, like I was saying, was counterclockwise, and the outer row was clockwise. Now, when you flip it over and start the star side, you want the inner row of spokes to go the same direction as the inner row of spokes on the other side was. So now it's reversed. Now we're going to be going clockwise with the inner row of spokes and counterclockwise with the outer row of spokes. So we got a few in here right now, and it's starting to come together. You just gotta make sure we get them all lined up with the the ones at the right angle, because you know you mess up because either it's it's not the right angle or it's the gaps between the spokes isn't right. <laughs> so it's easier said than done, and it, and uh, it's really easy to mess it up. So, anyways, so anyway, uh, yeah, here we go. We're gonna put that one over here. In 
you just thread these nipples in through the back side of the hub of the rim right here just like so Now we're leaving a whole set of row, a uh, whole set of holes open for the other section here, of course. There we go. They're all kind of loose yet, so we can wiggle this around because if we start tightening them up, it gets really hard. And then we end up having to loose them all. So it's kind of why we're leaving them loose right now to begin with. Because we know that this last row is going to get real tight. So anyway, stay tuned. We'll get going here on the next row here soon all right so we got the last row started here we got a couple in and we can tell that we gotta wiggle it around to get these these nipples to start so then when we start tightening this up um the book also mentions that between the edge of the rim here and the edge of the, the hub there's gotta be a quarter inch gap on both sides all the way around here like quarter oh. inch here this will be quarter inch proud. Yeah, so this will be sticking out a quarter inch. And then... On each side. On each side, like I said. Yep. And then anyway... Uh, yeah, here we go. We got a few left here. I think we got like six left after this one. So anyway, stay tuned here. We'll finish this up here real quick and move on to the next few steps here. There we go. Last uh, last spoke here we're putting in. So now we uh, work on centering the hub and then start tightening these spokes up. Well, the book also refers to running each nipple into the last so that the last thread is just covered. Okay, that's a good way to start. So uh, we're going to run the... I guess. We'll find out if that works. I don't, I don't know. Yeah, so we'll work on running all these in. This is a good starting point. Maybe we can get try it anyway. So we'll see. So stay tuned. With the nipple wrench. Alright, so with... Uh, the book here it talks about how we need once we have all the to this point we start running these uh, nipples all the way up to where we hide the threads and that's pretty much what it says there and then we go from there and and tighten them up as as needed so we're using a a nice little wrench here so it doesn't damage the the nipples and stuff when we go to put this together but um, we're about halfway through here on threading these up all the way at a good starting point so we'll get this all finished up here and we'll move on to the next couple things we gotta do all right well this rim being finished being laced right here ready to get trued on the chewing stand here and anyways uh, we're gonna I just want to cover a couple things that remind a few important details here when when lacing the wheel um, like the manual says, we're going to be starting with the with the the brake drum end up, and then we we start the spokes off like this. So we started with the the lower set of holes, the inner set of holes here. So the inner row of spoke holes, and then we went in a clockwise rotation, and then the top outer row of holes. We went with a clockwise rotation around like this, and this is the the brake drum side, and um, it gets bolted on with um, the lug bolts that with the socket head it comes into the back side here and tightens up that way. 
Okay, so with that being like the major step there, we gotta make sure when you go to set this all up, it later later says down here wire, you gotta make sure that the that the, when you place the rim over the hub, the tire valve hole, we talked about that where it needed to be 90 degree to 180 degree from the hub grease fitting. So now to reference that, we'll show you this other side here. So here's our tire valve here, and then our star side, and the grease fitting is right here. So we're at close to 180 degrees. I mean, so we're somewhere between 90 and 180, like I said. Now, particular note here, for the 18 inch rim, the rim is placed over the hub either side down so it doesn't matter what they mean by that is the, the side with the hole so this would be considered one side and the other side without the hole would be the other side right so this can be either way on the 18 now on 16s it's got to be on the star hub side because the diameter of the of this rim is so much shorter than the 18 and 19 or even a 21 um, of course we didn't have 19 and 21 back then but as for nowadays, so like right here it says 16 inch rim is placed over the hub with the tire valve hole down opposite of the brake drum side because with the brake drum on there it makes it a bad bad clearance to be able to put air in it, fill it up. So that's a key note there. But anyways, um and then when you flip it over, when you start doing the star side, like I was saying before, the interset goes the same way as the other side's interset. So see how this interset back here on this one is going clockwise, and the interset on this side is going clockwise, and the outer set is going counterclockwise. So with this 40 spoke pattern, you should have two X's like this and it should all look the same when you come around otherwise if it don't I suppose you got it messed up somehow but it's all turned out pretty good here so anyway we'll go on to uh, we'll go on to chewing the wheel now so stay tuned here All right, we got the wheel here on the chewing stand now. The spokes are mostly tightened up all the way around and we're gonna use the chewing stand to finish tightening them all up. Uh, we did end up backing some of them out. But anyways, we're about ready to like start chewing this thing. So that's kind of what a chewing stand looks like. Mounts into the, into the hub right through here. And then, of course, the wheel just rotates on here. And then, so we're checking for roundness, both in and out from the hub, and then up and down, all that stuff. So, right here, we're setting up the, the guide right now to make sure it's centered, the reference point it, and then go from there. So, yeah, stay tuned here. So starting here at the core hole, we're going to kind of like work our way this way. Starting on the outside there. Yeah, just tighten up a little. Just work our way around. That way, that way we have a good starting point and nowhere to stop at. So as we start tightening some up, other ones are getting loose and so on. So this is a continuous uh, way of doing things right here because eventually we'll end up getting it true by doing this so we'll keep moving forward here and we'll keep uh, coming back to see how we're doing here so stay tuned all right so he's still running those uh, spokes in the nipples in tighter but um, we're gonna talk about this chewing of the wheel a little bit here so it really spells it out really well in this book here the original uh, shop manual here and even the new reproduction ones are are good too but because it's just a print photocopy of this anyway but
But anyways, um, it talks about how we start at the valve hole and work our way around until all the threads are, are covered up. And then it goes into detail on both 18 inch wheel and 16 inch wheel. So the rim must be properly centered sideways in relation to the hub for correct alignment. So we talked about that. And what that means is like using a straight edge, you're making sure that this is a good 90 degree angle right here and straight across with the hub relation. And uh, it's got some fancy words in here, but that's kind of like the gist of it. And then it goes on to talk about how um, tracking and stuff is important. Otherwise, the tracking and for the front and rear wheels will be bad if it isn't done properly. So then measurement shown in illustration 143, it talks about how the edge of the hub here, where the spokes go in, in correlation to the outer, di outer rim diameter there, that's actually like um, 11 64ths for a 16 inch rim. Earlier I mentioned it was quarter, but I was misspoken and that was actually talking about the 18 inch wheel. 18 inch wheels are quarter inch. But anyway, we'll keep going on through this. Uh, this is quite a timely process, so stay tuned here. Just about getting closer to getting done. So we're like on our second pass here and we only have a couple threads showing on each spoke and we're going one at a time and we're getting that way it's even so next time we'll buzz in here will be oh man all the threads might be gone by then so anyways so stay tuned here then we'll start making adjustments on this on the if it needed to be all right so we're working on trying to get it straight here of course it's got a couple spots we're tightening the spokes up and we're getting that to come out. So you can see the straight edge there he's got. I'm gonna rotate it again here and tighten up the spoke here. Oh, all the, I need to send it over. Okay, it's so it's loose here. Here it's tight. Over here it needs to be tightened up. Or it needs to be loosened over here. So we're loosening one side and then tighten the other side to pull either left or right. focus is trying to is messing with it but yeah anyway you get the gist of it we're gonna run a run it by on that straight edge and he finds his low and high spots and then we either loosen the one side and tighten the other side to pull it in or out so stay tuned here getting closer all right so we got this side pretty good um we're gonna run it back across here again just to see how how good we got it so we're gonna try to focus on that on that blue straight edge there. Just a little bit left. Yeah. So, yeah, we're about done on this side. Then we'll have to move over to the other side. Yeah, looks pretty good. All right, so we think we got this thing pretty straight. So we got the up and down and in and out, um, however you want to reference it, consistent. And then we have the 
the left and right um, clearance. I mean, uh, truing really well too. And then we had the we put the straight edge on there, and we measured it across, and we had the true eleven sixty fourths, like we had in the in the book here. So this pretty much ends this here. And I guess the uh, next step we're going to be doing is probably down the road we'll be putting tires on this thing. So, and we got a whole other reel to do yet. So, anyway, so hope you enjoyed this kind of the process of truing a wheel. All right, so we got this all laced. It's all tightened up. Um, there's just a few things I want to uh, talk about again, just to remind everybody or everything that uh, when you're doing this, um, yeah, I'll just go over that stuff right now. So anyways, what we're gonna, what I'm gonna talk about is, you know, like you wanna start with some threads showing here. That way then you, when you go around tightening them all up, you're tightening them evenly because you don't want to be all tight on one side and then loose on the other side you because this hub needs to be centered um, like they say in the book here so what I'm saying is that when you start here with the with the valve hole it's a good reference point because you always know where start and finish is at so we start here and we tighten this all the way up until the threads disappear just like the book said and then you just move on to the next one and just keep going until each group is done. These four, then that group's done, and then so on. While doing that, you're also making sure that uh, it's staying centered, the, the hub's staying centered here in reference to the outer part of the rim. And then it does it on its own when you pull them in together like that. So anyways, um, like for rims that have bad damage, um, it's really, really next to impossible to fix them. Like if it's severely twisted, bent, or rotted through, uh, you need to replace the rim. Especially like the spoke nipple holding dimples right here. Um, sometimes they like to, to rip and cut and break. And then, and then what will happen is the whole thing will just like pop out and that's not good. Um, also like on the back side here, you, you want to make sure that, um, that your, your, uh, let's see here if I can show you. Like on, on the, on the, um, spoke nipples here, sometimes the spokes will actually start to poke through. And you want to make sure they get ground, grind them down as well. And then that way, that way it doesn't cut into the tube. So, anyways, uh, what else we got here? So then, as it talks about centering, straight, doing a straight edge thing here, 18s are a quarter inch distance between the edge of the hub and the edge of the rim. 16s are 11 64s. I'm not sure so much on the 19s and the 21s. I think it's the same as this 18 because it just brings the the rim out farther because it's the same width rim but uh, it doesn't really cover the 19 and the 21 in here because that was all later date stuff but um something else that's, smart, that's also important too uh, that when you um, like if you if you're offsetting the rim like a lot of people like to do that with custom bikes and stuff because of how they're gonna run their their brakes and all that stuff. Um, if you need to bring offset, like left and right movement here, let's say if you want it to, you want the rim to be farther on this side and be f like flush or more with the outer edge of the hub here, you would uh, you would loosen the other side, opposite side, and you would and you would pull it this direction using tightening on this side these two and then so on along here and that's how you get your offset now that does your left and right and of course like I was mentioning just a little bit ago your your uh, your distance between here and here can change is if you have some of it tightened on one side and not so much on the other side and then you end up having 
a, a big old wobbly wheel if you don't have that centered right. So anyway, hopefully I covered everything on there. with kind of what it talks about here. Um, otherwise, it's pretty much a straight through, straight through procedure here with the manual. So, uh, but uh, anyway, so now we'll just uh, talk about the rim and stuff here a little bit. All right, well, in closing here, I guess uh, we're all pretty much done with this. Ready for the tire um, and going on the bike. But anyways, uh, just finish up by talking about the overall appearance of the wheels and stuff back then. So this is what, a, you know, pretty much a 1940 to 1955 Star Hub design wheel looked like um, for standard equipment. Um, most of the bikes were, were black, had black rims. All the Star Hubs were black painted, gloss black, with a, a Parkerized star and a round head slotted screw. And then with cadmium spokes and uh, cadmium nipples here. Now there is some that had Parkerized, that was Parkerized uh, spokes and Parkerized nipples, but everything else was still black and Parkerized. Those were mainly, mainly the and mostly the the war year bikes like 1942 to 1945. So um, anyways, uh, there was uh, also the olive drab rim, which was painted olive drab for the war bikes. And then there was the um, the navy, the navy like gray as well on the big twins. Um, the flathead models. Um, what else I got here? Uh, the chrome. The chrome was an option for the rims. It was cost a little bit more for a chrome wheel. Um, what that really consisted of was just a chrome outer rim. Cadmium spokes was cadmium nipples. And then it was still a black star hub in the middle. Black gloss black uh, star hub. That was the consistence of the chrome wheel. Um, so like in 1940... Like I was saying before, 1940 was the first year of 16-inch wheel being an option. Because prior to that, it was all 18s. And uh, a lot of the roads back then in the 40s, 30s, and older uh, were all gravel yet in the United States here. So um, it wasn't until about mid-World War II to the end of World War II when we really started doing the interstate and uh, getting the road system a lot, a lot better and starting paving everything. Um there's nothing wrong with the, the bigger wheel. It's just that it it was more attractive and more comfortable and more stable with the, the wider tire and the smaller rim on these bigger bikes like the Harleys. Because even the British bikes and and stuff, they use the the nineteen inch wheels and uh and eighteens as well, depending on what type of bike we'll be talking about. But anyways, back to this. Um so I hope you enjoyed all this, and uh, stay tuned for more videos coming up. We're about ready to start putting this bike together, so this is pretty exciting. Uh, it's going to get real exciting here pretty soon, because um, we'll end up putting tires on. We'll probably do a segment on that coming up, and then we'll we'll be able to start putting stuff on the frame. So, so stay tuned. See you again soon.